Good morning, River Heights. Happy Monday. Sorry I'm a little late. Um, Got to get set up here. And uh, yeah, so now we're here. A little gloomy out today. Looks like it's going to rain, like rain a lot. But anyway, that's okay. Could do without the wind though. But you know, it's okay. It's Monday. Happy, happy Monday. Things are getting green. Bushes, trees, things are blossoming. The allergies are kicking in, you know, all the fun stuff that comes with spring. So anyway, looks like we're going to get a shot of summer. Morning, Wes. Morning, Dad. Uh, going to get a shot of summer this week and then next week back to spring temperatures. So, you know, it is what it is. Welcome to Minnesota. Um, anyway, it's great to be here this morning. I uh, look forward to sharing this morning. Morning, Mom. I got all family here today. This is great. Um, so yeah, looking forward to a good week this week. I'm really excited this week. Uh, I'll wait until after I'm done with my devotion. So uh, we're going to be taking a look at Ephesians chapter 5 today. So I don't know if you want to get Bibles out or get your Bible app on, whatever. Get your Bible on. Um and check out Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to look at that a little bit. <sighs> but I'm going to open up, open us up with some prayer this morning. So Holy Spirit, we just invite you to come. To say thank you for today. Thank you for the day that you made. This is a day that you've made. God, let us rejoice. Be glad in it. Uh, God, let us let our minds be open. That our hearts be ready. Um to hear your word this morning and let the seed just grow this morning and, and fill us up. We just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Go. Okay, now I can see. Ah, good morning, Cindy. Good to see, see you here this morning. Awesome, everybody. Well, we're going to take a look at Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, we're going to start in verse 1. Uh, I'm just going to read a little bit of it and we're going to talk about it for a second or two says this in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be named among you as is proper among saints. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place. But instead, let there be thanksgiving. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure or who is covetous, that is, an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes up, comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not become partners with them. For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. And try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of the things they do in secret. But... When anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, arise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. We're going to start there. Hey, Michael, aren't you out with the guys right now? Anyway, good to see everybody. Um, yeah, that's that's loaded. Those first 11, 12, uh, 14 verses is loaded. And we could do a whole sermon series probably on that, but I'm going to take a run at it here for a few minutes because it, just a couple things really stand out. And, you know, devotions kind of gives us um, <clears throat> an idea of something that we can do, um, that we can, hi, Sue Helser, um, but it gives us an idea of things that we can think about and that we can hold true to ourselves. And so what what this reminded me of verses, again, Ephesians 5 verses 1 through 14. If you think about your relationship with Christ, um, 
think about when you receive Christ. And I love that because it even says that. Um, uh, take no part in it for the shameful. Um, yeah. Anyway. Um, oh, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the war in the Lord. Um, walk as children of light. And so when you receive, when you receive Christ, that light comes in you. And here's the thing, the closer, the closer you get, the closer your relationship becomes with God, the more you want to be like him. Hence, hence, good morning, Carolyn. Um, hence the be imitators of God as beloved children. And then it goes on what that looks like because as our relationship grows with Christ, we become more and more like him and we don't want to do, we, we, we shut off those things that we used to do or wanted to do because we were in the dark back in the day. And when we receive Jesus and we have that relationship and we feed that relationship and it keeps growing and growing, good morning, Patrick, and growing, then what that does is it causes us to come together more and more with Christ and then it solidifies our relationship with him and we become more like him and we walk as children of light. And we choose not to do those things. And when those things, when the impure things happen, this all that it talks about verses one through 14 talks about those things. It kind of gives us a sick feeling, right? Um, it kind of like, oh, like a bad taste, like, oh, like something in your gut. Like you can tell when something is wrong in your gut. You're just like, oh, there's a little twinge there. Like, I don't know if I should be saying this. I don't know if I should be a part of this. I don't know if I should be doing this. Mm. And you're right, because that is that is Christ in you. That is God in you. The Holy Spirit is telling you, get away. Get away. Don't even do it because that's not who you are. That is not what you're about. And so the closer you are with Christ, the closer your relationship is with him, the more that nastiness, that nasty taste happens to you when it ha when it is happening. And you become more aware and you're sensitive to it because of your relationship with Christ. And so, you know, that is what is awesome about your relationship with God is that the, you become more like him. And I love, I love it says at the beginning, it says, and walk in love as Christ loved us, loved us. Because the, again, the more we grow in Christ, the more we get in the word, the more we hang out with people that are like-minded, like, like believers, um, that's not to say not to hang out, not to be with other people, because we want to be the light in the world. That is what we're called to do. But to like really hang out like best friends and besties um, with people that are like minded like us so that we can share it. And we can, we can, we can, um, as, as the Bible says, is iron sharpens iron. So we sharpen each other so that when we, when we are out in the world, when we're out with other people, maybe, or whatever we're doing, we shine the light of Christ. We shine the light of God in those places. Good morning, Emily. Good morning, Monica. And so that is what I love these first 14 verses. And it is so loaded. It is so loaded with good stuff about being an imitator of God and, and doing the things that God's called you to do. And so when we are trying to get answers from God and trying to look to him, how's your relationship with God? When you feel, I hear a lot of people say, I don't feel close to God. I don't feel like God is with me. How's your relationship going? That's my question. How is your relationship? Um, because people think that, some people think that, well, I, I accepted God, I accepted Christ and now everything's going to be great or now I should hear from God immediately. Well, no, you have to strengthen your relationship. I mean, you are going to hear from God, but you, you need to strengthen the relationship with God. And as your relationship strengthens, more and more things begin to happen. More and more trust is there. You begin to trust God a lot more as well. I mean, we, <clears throat> to be honest, we should be trusting God immediately, you know, but in a human sense, we love God and we care, we care what God thinks and we want God to, to help us out and be there. But we also need to strengthen our relationship to be an imitator of God and to walk in love as Christ loved people and died for us. Because when we imitate God, we will then take on that love, that role of love and be loved to other people. 
um, it is so good to hear God's voice and to hear the Holy Spirit and, and to really do what God has called us to do. And that's to be light in the world. He gives us, each one of us, gifts to do different things. But he has called us to be light in the world. That's what we're called to be as believers, uh, as believers in Jesus, as believers um, in Christ. We are to spread the good news, share the gospel. And a lot of times nowadays, sharing the gospel is more action than words. That is for sure. Um, so people are watching what we do. Um, it's hard. It's difficult. But we can do it. And again, with God's God's mercy, God's grace, and imitating him, and our relationship grows with him, man, ama it's amazing what we can do. It's amazing what can happen. Um, yeah, thanks, Emily, because God is always speaking to us. It's whether we hear it or not. And so as, you know, that's the thing too is the Bible says that uh, Jesus says that the sheep hear my voice and they know my voice. Well, how do we know God's voice? If, we, if we've never heard it, if we've never experienced it, we have to practice it. We have to practice hearing God's voice and understanding it. And once you hear it, it's like, oh my, that's it. That's it. But that's probably not going to happen unless you're, growing in your relationship with Christ. And so to be an imitator of God, you know, this is therefore be imitators of God. And so, um, guys, my, my encouragement is for us to strengthen our relationship, strengthen our, our, um, our growth in Christ, and then let the Holy Spirit do his thing in us and through us. And you're going to see some, some significant changes happening in the way you think and in your thought process and the way you you act even sometimes is going to be a little different and how you get that gut feeling like oh I probably shouldn't be doing that or, oh I shouldn't have said that and and things like that so again verses 1 through 14 is loaded with stuff and you could have a sermon series on these things but I just want to I just I I read that this weekend and I just wanted to really um good morning Denise um but I just I just really felt strongly that God just really, we, we need to work in our relationships with our relationship with God um, to be an imitator of him and to grow and be more like him. As we grow stronger in our relationship, we are more and more like him and become more like him. So I uh, just want to encourage you in your relationship with God, uh, no matter where you're at right now, um, as far as uh, emotionally or whatever, um, you know, maybe you think God is way out there, like he's not there and I don't know where he's at. Or maybe it's like, man, he's the strongest that I've ever felt. And people are in different, different places. Well, God is the same yesterday, today and forever. It's where we choose to have relationship with him. And so, um, yeah, so it, it's, yeah, everybody's relationship with God is different. It should be. Um, and everybody's at a different point. So just keep on keeping on, if you will. Um, but dive into his word, get into prayer, get with some people that have um, like-mindedness. They, they think similar to you and then go out and, and share the gospel, be the light into the world. So, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap us up with some prayer and dive in. If you wanna dive into verses one through 14, keep looking at that and read it over and over again, feel free. Again, it's Ephesians chapter five, verses one through 14. Um, yeah, let me pray for us this morning. Holy Spirit, we just thank you for who you are. God, you're so amazing. So Holy Spirit, be with my friends today, be with my family today. Um, our church family, God, just be with us. We want more and more of you. And God, it's it's so apparent, uh, just looking at society today, how distant we are from you. And um, But yet at the same time, God, we see amazing things happening. And uh, God, I'm so excited about what is happening. So you're amazing. God, just keep working through us. Keep giving us opportunities to strengthen our relationship with you. Bring those to mind. Let our minds be ready for that and open to that. And have our eyes be open to seeing you and our ears be attentive to hearing your voice. God, we just thank you for that. Thank you for your word that is true um, 
and it rings true for yesterday and today. So God, we thank you. It's in your name we pray, amen. It is doing good doing church together, Wes. Love it. Hey, I just wanted to invite everybody today um, and whoever watches this, that this Saturday, May 14th from 11 to 1, I think an all church thing went out, but I'm getting ordained on Saturday by ordination. I'm so excited. So it's from 11 to 1 here at uh, River Heights Vineyard Church, 6070 Cahill Avenue in Invergrove Heights. Um, but I'm super stoked about it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a blast. So come on out. I'd love to see you. Um, hang out with you for a little while. Um, yeah, I'm inviting everybody. We're inviting everybody. All church emails went out and everything. So anyway, blessings, guys. Have a great week. Have a great Monday. We'll see you on the flip side. Bye-bye.